I'm Martin Schreiner. Stories Beyond Words is the title of an album containing three of my instrumental works. They were performed and recorded in January 2020 by pianist Alexandra Ivanova with violinist Anastasia Ditostova Abajiva. As the title of this album suggests, the works are intended to tell stories. So how can instrumental music tell us a story? Even without singers conveying words, instrumental music can still convey meaning to us. However, the meaning is not specific to us in the way that we might expect from hearing words being sung. Rather, the meaning is more abstract and shaped by each of us in our own specific experience and sensibilities through our active listening. A title on a piece of music can be important in creating a mental framework for listeners. Whether each of us is a musician or not, our minds create the possibility to hear sounds as music. With a descriptive or suggestive title, we open our minds to be ready to draw upon our own experiences. We bring context from our own experiences as we understand and participate in our own creation of the musical story as it unfolds to us in an abstract pattern of sounds. Uh, in this way, whether we are performers, composers, or listeners, we all are involved in making the music and creating a story from it. The three pieces on this album represent three kinds of storytelling. The first piece is three Japanese images. This suite of three pieces asks the listener to imagine visual scenes through the suggestive titles of the three movements. Image one, Koto strings resounding in blue sky. Image two, dewdrops fall, memories ring upon a moonlit pond. And image three, dragonflies in furious flight. In the music itself, there are hints of some traditional Japanese scales and musical gestures. I also had in mind some of the very expansive screen paintings of traditional Japanese art, which very often depict our connection to nature. For example, the first image, Koto strings resounding in blue sky, opens with an arpeggiation of a five-tone scale in the manner that might suggest a koto player strumming across the strings of their instrument. The general character of the music is broad and expansive, like blue sky. The piano uses and evokes this strumming gesture and expands the tonal palette beyond the opening five-tone scale. I make no attempt to imitate traditional Japanese music. Instead, I'm telling a story without words, using only sounds and drawing upon my own experiences and associations and making sonic pictures. Alexandra Ivanova has used the score to create her version of the story, which she beautifully renders in the performance on this recording. Listen to the excerpt of her subtle and expressive performance in the opening to the first image, Coat of Strings Resounding in Blue Sky. What story do you hear? The second piece on this album is a duo for violin and piano, titled Bilat, The Fox and the Grapes. The kind of story this piece conveys is one with a moral. It is inspired from Aesop's fable of the same title, The Fox and the Grapes. The music is constructed from two themes, a rhythmically active angular theme with unsettled harmonies representing the fox, and a contrasting rhythmically placid theme with luscious harmonies representing the grapes. In conveying the moral of this fable, you can hear the reaching and jumping gestures in the angular music of the fox. The music suggests a kind of desperate dance in the fox's failing attempts to reach and consume the delicious grapes. Throughout the piece, the theme of the luscious grapes is undisturbed by the theme of the desperate fox. At a pivotal moment in the music, 
you can hear the last gasp of the fox's theme fade away with an unsettled mocking tone, as if to suggest the fox saying, I have no taste for these sour grapes. The piece ends with the luscious sounding and undisturbed theme of the grapes. Here is an example of the fox's theme. Here's an excerpt of the music representing the grapes theme. The third composition on this album is titled Opera Scenes Without a Libretto, a work I composed for Alexandra Ivanova. This musical story for piano is the most abstract of the three pieces on the album. It uses the forms found in traditional Western opera. The titles of the seven movements in the suite are Prologue, Chorus One, Aria, Recitative, Fugue, Chorus Two, and Epilogue. As an audience, we are to take in the dramatic unfolding of these movements and weave together our own sense of a story, though a very abstract one. Here, the outward multimedia spectacle of opera is reduced to one lone element, the instrumental music. No libretto, no singing, no acting, no stage scenery, no spectacle. Only a piano to shape a suggestion of a story. Our minds fill in the space left from the absence of the other elements. To my thinking, this is similar to the way that our imagination fills in the large amount of empty space in this Zen landscape painting by Tensho Shuban. Opera Scenes Without a Libretto does not reference any existing opera. I did not have a particular story in mind for composing this music, but it does suggest the general idea of an opera from the forms of the movements and the musical gestures, rhythms, and sound textures. To give you an example, this excerpt from the beginning of the recitative movement, a recitative, that movement in an opera where the singer sings many words quickly in order to move the story along and set up the next scene. A recitative is characterized by many repeated notes and punctuated with cadences from the orchestra. I hope that you can hear the recitative singer and orchestra's cadence in Alexandra's rendering in this example from the album.
Thank you for listening. Here is where you can find complete performances of these compositions.